Our top story, though, right now tonight is a topic that could be the top national story on most nights by many metrics. America's gun epidemic and the ongoing threat and reality of a highly armed nation with easy access to some of the most dangerous guns in the world and a gun-related death toll that exceeds every other country per capita in the world. And that can look like this. That was the harrowing scene at a recent Little League baseball game in South Carolina. You can imagine or feel how all of the kids and parents felt. And that is the kind of story that may not even make what we call national news, that you may not have heard about. It occurred because teenagers were firing in a nearby parking lot. And we live in a country where gunfire is routine, where deadly shootings are quite normal, and even mass shootings actually occur daily on average in America. Take these first four months of 2023 that we just concluded. There have been 121 days in that time period through the end of April. And in that time, there have been more than 121 mass shootings, a total of 184 mass shootings defined as four or more people shot in one single incident. Meanwhile, down in Texas, a state with extremely lax gun laws, there was this scare at a basketball game. That is real footage. There was no active shooter. No shots were actually fired during an incident uh, that was still, of course, very scary to everyone there. And we're just showing you some of that initial reaction. Police found that there wasn't an active shooter, but the instant reaction of an overarmed and traumatized populace is quite clear, which is a point we wanted to make here without having to show you uh, another video of a victim or someone actually shot. But you can see how quickly everyone goes into active shooter mode. Because people understand quite intuitively that more guns has not made the United States safer than less armed countries. And in many ways, it has not made people any less afraid, as those scenes from Little League to basketball to any mini mart in America can show you where people immediately go into this mode. The scenes illustrate, even without any bullets striking any person, how many people do live now with the pervasive fear of what it means to reside in a nation like this. And while there's no shooting or mass shooting that's easily absorbed by any community, each have their own tragedy, incidents involving children are especially harrowing and increasingly common. So tonight, as we report on this topic for you, there's an active manhunt in Texas for someone who killed Five people, including a nine-year-old boy. The suspected shooter used the military-style weapon that most democracies do not allow anyone to buy in the very first place. The individual allegedly going on a rampage with an AR-15-style rifle. This was after neighbors asked him to stop firing random shots in his yard so that their baby could sleep. Texas Tribune reports that in a new account. This is quite certainly and quite obviously how we live in America now. But is it how we choose to live? No. And I want to walk you through that before I bring in our experts on a story that is important, that, as I tell you, could be our top story just about any night of the year. I say no because not if by choose we mean the chosen preferences of the majority or even the majority of votes in Congress, where majorities have repeatedly supported at least some gun safety measures, 
only to see a largely Republican minority block them in the Senate. That was the outcome after one of the deadliest school shootings ever back in Newtown. It's the choice people make when asked. People choose stronger safety laws. Nine out of ten people now want stronger universal background checks. Eight out of ten want to raise the age for buying a gun to 21. A supermajority backs extending the waiting period to at least a month. That's something that reduces the risk that people go out and buy new guns for anger or vengeance, which is not usually correlated with lawful conduct. And what you're looking at there, by the way, if you're curious, all those numbers, that's from a Fox News poll. I'm not telling you how to make up your mind. I'm not telling you what's a good or bad idea. I'm just reminding you how overwhelmingly there is a consensus about at least some safety measures here. Indeed, you follow the news, so you probably know there's a lot of issues that you won't find that kind of consensus on. Now, that is not the entire story. There have also been calls and rising support, even in places that have been habitually more conservative and pro-gun. The clash over what became democracy and how to expel people out of a state legislature that we all zoomed in on in Tennessee, that began with calls and protests for gun safety after horrific shooting. The 2022 elections brought change at the state level. Michigan's new leadership has now passed universal background checks and mandatory safe storage laws to protect children in that state. Colorado passing several gun safety measures. Washington State just moved ahead recently with this assault weapons ban, including the kind of AR-15 that is sadly in the news today and that other story I mentioned to you. So part of the story as well is reform at the state level. But that's not all. I'm always going to tell you as much as we can the whole picture. There's also polarization because other conservative states like Florida are going further this year and loosening gun laws to allow more concealed weapons. We are living in a uniquely American problem of our own policies here with these, as I showed you, more mass shootings than there are days of the year. Shootings that end lives, that end children's lives before they've hardly begun, that shootings that terrorize communities, and that make something truly horrific and sometimes objectively avoidable becomes something habitual for us. Something that you might say, oh, the news anchor's talking about the shootings. I know about that. I've accepted that that's part of life. Or maybe I don't think that'll ever change. Almost like you want to turn it off. And, and you could turn off the discussion about it. But we're a long ways from turning off the underlying problem. This is America. This is how we live now. The data and the facts from so many other democracies, Canada to England, and a lot in between show this is not how we have to live. Few other nations have chosen this set of trade-offs when it comes to life and death and the safety of our children. And the last thing I'll say before I bring in our experts on what I hope you stay with me for is an important discussion tonight. A little reminder that objectively, numerically, most Americans no longer choose to live this way. If you ask them in a poll, as we showed you, or if we had a national legislature that actually wrote the majority's choices into law.